Good morning, everyone. My name is Philip Alvelda. I'm here to tell you about our new company, Brainworks, a foundry where we apply the very latest research and discoveries in neuroscience to build next generation tools in machine learning and trustworthy intelligent machines to solve truly global challenges. We do it by taking the very latest technologies from DARPA driven research and apply it to build the missing pieces of synthetic brains that offer new, more general functionality than the traditionally narrow tools of the past. And the, as far as the global challenges we've decided to tackle, it was really a tough triage job, but we decided to focus on one critical pent need, the actual delivery of healthcare services, not so much optimizing billing or payments or transactions or administration, but the actual problem that is a scaling limit for us today. Uh, many of you are probably aware of the inverting population pyramids, where with, with aging nations, of course, Korea, Japan, Spain, Italy, but we're not that far behind, we literally do not have enough young people to care for the increasing health care needs of the elderly. And of course, as you know, in the United States, we have a huge problem with administrative and operational efficiency. So we decided to apply these very latest AI tools to enhance and extend and automate the process of delivering these services. The first area we decided to focus on when we started to do the analysis of where were the largest opportunities, where do we spend the most money, heart health turns out to be the big spend. And we realized that there is a component of heart health that we've all taken for granted for so many years simply because, well, we've been doing it the same way for so long. But the process of taking vital signs with a nurse and 15 minutes and facilities and an examination room and $5,000 of equipment, that hasn't changed in more than 50 years. And we realized that by marshalling these new, more general AI tools, we could begin to build new systems that automate and enhance and extend how you do the vital sign measurement process in such a way that it's transformative. We're introducing an entirely new product category that is the synthesis of several different powerful AI tools called ambient biometrics. It's a revolution in patient monitoring because it takes what used to require all that time and money and it makes it part of the environment that just happens without you paying any attention. It automatically recognizes where a face is in a camera image by pushing all of these technologies all the way into the sensor analytics. So we can identify, is there a patient to monitor? We can find their face. We can assess, are they a consenting patient and are they in our patient database? If so, pass that stage of AI analysis to the next one, which analyzes the video image of the face. Tiny changes in color, motions of the head, bobs of the chest, flares of the nostril, things that your eye can't quite perceive. But with these AI enhanced sensors, we can begin to pull out your vital information, heart rate respiration, even blood pressure. And once we've identified that measurement, and by the way, we can take one out about every five seconds, we pass that data on to yet a third stage, which evaluates the precision of the measurement. Very powerful AI technology that now can assess the quality of each measurement and decide, does it meet the precision requirements of the FDA for vital sign recording? And if so, automatically attach it to your patient record. Here, let me show it to you in operation here. I haven't really tested it on the stage, so this is a little bit of a bold move here. But, uh, but you can see I'm just opening up a Safari web browser, going to the website. Can I access the camera? Yes, please. And you can see how quickly it identified the face, locked onto it, figured out who I was. Of course, I'm the CEO. It better freaking recognize me. Uh, <laughs> And, and of course, it pulled out my historical heart rate history and is continually making heart rate measurements. So you can see I'm about 82 beats per minute. I'm a little excited here on stage. Um, but my heart rate variability, that's square graph. It's a tool that cardiologists use to assess your, your heart's response to metabolic demand. Looks pretty good. 
But the more important thing is, it's taking these measurements without me really paying attention to it. I just happen to be in the field of view of the camera. If I turn away and walk away, you can see it kind of loses track and then just stops doing anything and will go away. If I come back, it'll recognize who I am uh, and then pull up the, the technology and the data and begin, again, recording the data to my record. So very, very powerful automating the whole system. Now, think about what that does to a clinical operation. We now have a system which is transformative just in cost of operation. What used to take about $360 worth of expense, people, time, equipment, 15 minutes, for one measurement, we can now do for hundreds of, med of patients in parallel for an entire month, 24-7, for about the same cost. So we actually have a credible shot at taking these new technologies and transforming healthcare, where you measure so rarely when you go to your annual doctor's appointment for you know, your, your physical, to something where any device you own, your tablet, your phone, the computer that's in front of you, a webcam on the wall, the smart TV in your living room, can be looking after your health all the time, taking measurements all the time, assessing your health all the time, and telling you in advance when you're likely or trending towards a problem where you can begin to imagine you know, finally making some progress on, on healthcare's holy grail of transitioning from reactive care after you've had the heart attack to preventive care and health maintenance before you have a crisis. But there, you know, beyond the operational costs and the, and the transformative nature of, of, of general operations, there's also some critical application areas which are really ripe for disruption and enhancement. So think of the NICU, where the baby's skin is so fragile that just hooking them up to the equipment damages them. And they're squirmy and the leads fall off and then it's a crisis and then you, know, you reattach the leads and you're back to, back to work. This is a system where we can transform that experience. Or think about elder care, where you have patients that like to be able to move around but you want to know how they're doing and what their health trends are. How quickly are they walking to the bathroom? Have they fallen? What's their heart rate, breathing, and respiration? Are they headed for a crisis? We can begin to be preventive in care from literal neonatal crave, uh, cradle all the way to uh, hospice and nursing home and everywhere in between. So it is a global opportunity to completely revolutionize and disrupt every aspect of heart, pulmonary, and of course we hope to address other conditions as we grow. But there's even more profound opportunity. This is a, actually a micrograph of MRSA. This is one of those disease resistant superbugs. And one of the poorly kept secrets of hospital operations is that if they put a blood pressure cuff on a patient with MRSA without having realized that they were contaminated, they can swab it but they can't autoclave it because it would destroy the blood pressure cuff. And if they take that blood pressure cuff and put it on another patient, they've given that patient MRSA. So the prospect of taking what used to require leads and cuffs and contacts and turning it into something that is automated and non-contact and just happens by being in the environment is transformative for infection control and disease management risk in hospitals. So as exciting as that is, and this, our first product, the Ambient Biometric Measurement System, keep in mind that this is only the first step in what we see as a transformative evolution of applying this technology every quarter to new opportunities. Starting with monitoring, going to diagnostics, predictive analytics, intervention planning, and human interface. We have great traction in our beginning field trials with some of the premier hospital groups in the United States. Uh, and have a finance process in, in progress to uh, accelerate our field validation and deployment. Thank you very much.